As Sherry said, the title of the message is Thrust into Glory. And that's a phrase that the Lord gave us several days ago, so we've been meditating on it and excited about it. Uh, thrust. And so let's just talk a little bit about thrust for a moment because we're being transformed. And it's easy to just continue along on a uh, some kind of a pathway, a, a, a pathway, a trajectory, and uh, maybe it's even one that's increasing. But a thrust uh, to me indicates that we're going to go to a higher level, that it's something, mm. uh, the word thrust can be a violent push, can be the thrust a sword into somebody or into something, uh, or thrust like a thrust of a rocket ship. And uh, one thing about a thrust, it, uh, definition of it is it's a force that overcomes a force. You know, there are forces out there that uh, are resisting you and resisting your advance and resisting your progress. And so we have to overcome forces uh, that would try to hinder us and to be an obstacle to us. And so let's just think for a minute, we're talking about being transformed. So this is really about the power that transforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've been around me for long, I like to talk about energy because energy is the active uh, power. It's the power that is activated, energized, uh, that work in us. Uh, so energy, so it's the energy of the Holy Spirit. So that's the bottom line. It's going to take the energy of the uh, Holy Spirit uh, in our lives to really thrust us into a higher level. And I want to just think uh, for a moment about uh, thrust and uh, an airplane. And so you can have a small airplane and it's got to have power. It also has to be designed for lift. If you just put a lot of power in an automobile, it just goes faster. But if you put power and, and energy into a uh, an airplane that has been designed with a lift in mind, and then you put uh, power and thrust behind that, it's going to fly. But you take a small airplane, and uh, it just takes a little bit of uh, energy or fuel to go, let's say, 100 miles. It might take uh, 25 gallons. And so uh, you have to have enough uh, power and thrust in that plane uh, let's say to go a hundred miles, you have to have, it's got to have some fuel, be carrying some fuel. But then you look at the big uh, wide bodied uh, jumbo jets like the Boeing four, uh, 747, it may carry 50 or 60,000 gallons of fuel to go to from the United States to Europe. And so it has to have a lot more thrust. Well, it's the same thing in the supernatural realm. There are different levels of uh, power and energy that can be released to do different things. And let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, just quickly, Second uh, Kings 4, chapter 4, uh, there was a young man that died and his mother came to Elisha or Elisha and wanted uh, him to, to uh, raise her son or, or at least that implied that she was wanting him to raise her son. And so he did uh, three different things. And first of all, he sent his servant there with his staff. So evidently his staff had raised people from the dead or he expected his staff uh, just by his servant carrying his staff to raise uh, the young man from the dead. But uh, the woman wouldn't let him just stay there. She wanted him to come to where her dead boy was. And so he went there and the servant said uh, there was no response. So that was evidently a level of uh, power or energy that was applied, but there was no response. And so uh, Elisha uh, laid on him, put his eyes on his eyes, his mouth on his mouth, his hands on his hand, mm -hmm. and the boy became warm. His body became warm, but he's not, he's not fully uh, raised up yet. And so then uh, the prophet begins to walk around and pray and, and decide what to do. And he comes back and he applies a higher level of power and energy mm, uh, to mm, the boy. Mm, the boy's mm, raised up mm, and he mm. gives it to his, to, uh, mm. his mother. Hallelujah. Another example is that, uh, uh, think about Jesus. Uh, Jesus in his, uh, he, he could, 
he could uh, raise the dead and heal the sick and do, uh, perform miracles. But in his own hometown, uh, there was something that hindered him. He could not perform miracles there. And it was the unbelief. I'm talking about Mark chapter six. It was the unbelief of the people there. So this message really uh, follows up on this concept. It matters who you're associated with. Ooh, who, hallelujah. Who's, who's around you. And, and it's going to mm. take the energy of all of us hallelujah, to thrust hallelujah. us into a higher mm -hmm, position mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the supernatural realm. And there, Jesus could not perform miracles. It was because of their unbelief. But he could still uh, perform some healing. He could still heal a few minor uh, sicknesses, minor ailments. And, and so it mattered not only how much uh, he could do, uh, but also how the people around him, what they were believing for. And so that's very important. And we continue on with Jesus in Mark chapter 8. Well, can I make a comment, just quick comment sure. here? The, the great revivals that have taken place, the great revivals in Argentina, the great revivals in in Brownsville, Florida, and in Lakeland, Florida, and, and many other places, Azusa Street uh, in California, there was a corporate uh, power that was there, an energy that was in that group of people. When they came, they came expecting. They came expecting to receive uh, their miracle. Uh, Catherine Kuhlman's meetings were the same way. Uh, Shambach and, and many others, uh, they, they had that energy flowing uh, as a corporate energy uh, throughout the whole group, and that electrified uh, the the place that they were in. Hallelujah. So really what we're doing tonight is stirring up all of our expectations. Yes. Stirring us up uh, that, that we can expect greater and th greater things by the Spirit of God operating Amen. in our midst Amen. and that he will take us to a higher level. Uh, higher level. Higher level. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's just continue the, with the story about Jesus. And uh, with uh, in Mark chapter 8, there was a, they brought a blind man to him. He took him out of the city because they didn't believe in the miracles there. And there was a lot of resistance there. And so that's the reason we're bringing this message up, that, that we all need to get into agreement and believe that God is taking us to a higher level, a higher, higher level in him. So Jesus had to take him away from the unbelievers. He prayed for him. And the man said, said I see uh, men as tree. He is blurry. It's still blurry. And, and so Jesus didn't stop. So he's going to apply a higher level and mm -hmm. accumulated mm -hmm. higher level of power uh, for him to be healed. And then he touched his eyes again and he was healed. So it matters how much power is applied or in, or in how much of the power is activated and energized. And, that, and then we're going to get more results if we have more energy uh, flowing. So I want to look at uh, three different uh, things quickly. And, and first of all, uh, that uh, we overcome natural things with more power. And that's just the airplane. But now the second thing I want to say is we overcome. So it's a force that overcomes a force. And so the thrust of the plane overcomes the force of gravity. The second point I want to talk about is that there are spiritual forces that overcome natural natural things. Mm. So if we think about uh, Mark chapter 14, we see Jesus walking on the water and Peter walking on the water. So this is spiritual, spiritual things, a spiritual force overcoming the natural force of gravity. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, hallelujah. so we're going through a progression here. There are greater natural forces that overcome lesser natural forces. But now step number two is that there are greater spiritual forces that overcome physical forces, and that's gravity. And, and uh, in Luke chapter 17, 
Luke chapter 17, Jesus says that we can speak to a tree and it will be cast and rooted, uprooted and planted in the sea. Oh, That's, wow. And, and what did he say about that? He said, the, if you have the faith of a mustard seed. So, so here we're talking Ooh. about a spiritual force that overcomes okay. a physical mm. force like a tree being rooted in the ground and we're going because we're going to hurl it we're going to cast it we're going to thrust it thrust it into <laughs> the sea but we've got to have spiritual a superior spiritual force uh that will pull it up uproot it and cast it into the sea well he also said in mark 11 verse 23 that uh mountains that we can move Ooh, mountains. mountains oh this is a force that overcomes a, a, a force. physical force mm. a force that overcomes a force it's a thrust cast it into the sea a mountain can you imagine how much a mountain weighs it's beyond my thinking but he said we can do it and i believe it he said it i believe that we and with a superior supernatural force of faith and, and let's just look at the process of what he said if you believe in your heart and, and what you believe what you say and you don't have any doubt so i'm looking at these supernatural forces it's going to overcome the natural forces of gravity holding a, a mountain in place and so what he's saying uh, truly truly i say unto you mm. you say into this, this mountain, mountain be removed and be, be cast, cast into, into the sea or that thrust uh, that's the, really another word for thrust and so you've got to have a superior supernatural uh power or force to take a mountain uprooted out of its uh, location and cast it into the sea so we're looking at some really interesting verses challenging to even think about and uh, i just love thinking about these and so i want to move now to uh, where there's a superior uh, spiritual force that overcomes a lesser spiritual force and in luke chapter 13 uh, jesus said uh, he went to synagogue on a Sunday, uh, on Sabbath, I'm sorry, on a Sabbath. <laughs> and, he, and he said, uh, ought not this woman who has been bound over by the hand of Satan, by Satan, uh, be loosed from this? And he said to her, be loosed from this spirit of infirmity. So this is a superior uh, spiritual force, his faith uh, versus the, the uh, resistance and the force of the uh, enemy, the devil, and the spirit of infirmity. So it, uh, we've got to have the thrust is a force that overcomes a force. That's the reason I, I, I love this word that, and that the Lord spoke to us several days ago, thrust, mm -hmm. and the thrust of God, and it's going to take us into his glory. Now, there's another uh, a spiritual thing that we can think about, and that is, uh, you know, Revelation 20, verse 13, uh, talks about death, uh, gives up the dead. And so you've got a spirit of death that's holding on and resisting the dead to come forth. And so we've got to have a, we've got to have a superior, uh, faith and, spiritual force god's force that overcomes the spirit of death that is holding people who are the dead mm -hmm. death gives up the dead oh hallelujah it's the spirit of death and so jesus mm -hmm. is walking in on in luke chapter 7 and towards the city of nain and he comes to this uh a funeral procession and uh, uh there's a young man that's uh, in a coffin i guess and and uh, Jesus stops it, stops the procession, and, and he speaks to the young man and uh, uh, touches the coffin, and, and he raises him up from uh, the dead. Now, what did he do? It's a superior, his superior, his faith, his power, uh, his force that he's operating in is superior to death. Woo, hallelujah! We have to realize there we've got to mm. we've got to have a force that overcomes the force. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to raise the dead, 
you've got to overcome some things. Amen. Uh, Amen. That's important. We've Amen. got to overcome. We've got to overcome some things. Okay, so now I want to just get to some specific things about being transformed. And I want to talk, start with, so those were just uh, an introduction. Uh, Sherry calls it an appetizer. It's, it's to, show, to show you we've got to have greater faith, greater Amen. power. Amen. If we're going to go to a higher level. And so now we're going to talk about how we're going to get it and how we're going to operate in it. And so I want you to see in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, we'll read out of a couple of translations here. It's about being transformed. You have to have a power of transformation. See, there's a lot, oh, of, good hallelujah, a lot hallelujah. of good Christians out there, and uh, mm, they're not mm. being transformed. And they might be just working their uh, fingers to the bone, but they're not being transformed because it's not what you do in the natural realm. It's a supernatural force we're talking about today. It's thrust into the glory. So we're going to have to be thrust into the glory in order to be transformed. Now, to be transformed, we've got to renew our mind because we're going to act differently, and we're going to uh, we're going to think differently, and we're going to act differently mm -hmm. when we are being transformed. And so mm -hmm. let's look at these two transformation about the glory. We'll keep in mind the glory. Mm -hmm. But we all, with unveiled faces, looking as into a mirror at the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Okay, and I also and want to read this same verse, but, but out of the message mm -hmm. translation. Nothing between us and God our faces shining with the brightness of his face. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah, our lives gradually becoming brighter and brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become just like him. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I love that that translation see here's yeah. the con here is the concept you have to have that energy out there energy is going to move us into the glory the glory is the presence of god the manifested presence, presence of, god. of god and and so uh, one person can have a, a amount an amount of energy uh and that will help us move into the glory and we're being changed by the glory and through the glory but if we come together in agreement then we're going to have more energy and it's going to move us into more of the glory more of the glory and let me give you a couple of examples uh we were in a meeting and uh, a big uh, a big meeting and there were maybe hundreds of people there uh, certainly hundreds of people and maybe m even more but hundreds of people and and the prophet grabbed up the uh, handkerchiefs he was going to anoint the handkerchiefs <clears throat> and we were all believing uh, that the anointing would go into those handkerchiefs so that people uh, could be uh, saved, could be healed, and demons could uh, would leave them. And we were all believing it. So you've got hundreds of people in agreement. Now, when he grabbed those up and started praying over them, the glory of God came. We, yeah, we and saw it. We saw it. It was the manifested glory of God. And why, why was that? Because... People were believing. That's right. There was an atmosphere there. And in that atmosphere, it was charged. We can be transformed into the image of Christ. Christ is moving in us and through us and by us. And oh, hallelujah. We're just so excited mm -hmm. about to be in that glory. Another example I want to give you is uh, we were in another uh, country one time and there was uh, people came up to be prayed for and and uh, Sherry told to one man who came up in a wheelchair, he said, she said, you sit there, you'll be the last one. I will pray for you after I pray for all these other people. He was a man who had never walked, never walked. And uh, later I felt of, of his back and had a big bulge in his, uh, in, in his spinal uh, area. And uh, he had never, the spinal fluids never got down to his legs and he had never been able to walk all of his life and so uh, people were being healed 
uh, we were praying for people and, and uh, God was manifesting his glory there. And, and then we had prayed for everybody, but by this time, everybody in the building had moved up front. Uh, yeah. It was a big circle around where everybody wanted to see what happened with that man. Well, uh, the man, uh, uh, another pastor and I, a pastor and I uh, began to help him up and he began to take slow steps, slow step with our assistance. But in a few minutes, a few moments, he began to take long steps, long steps. And as he was doing that, the glory of God was so intense that people began to be slain behind him as he walked as he walked past them, people were being slain uh, by the glory and demons started screaming and coming out of people Amen. because Amen. of the glory, the manifest Vested presence of, of God. God. And so it went around. Okay, so the, both of those examples Hallelujah. were when the people got in agreement that we want to see the glory of God. And then the glory is going to move in. And, and the reason we're talking about this message is we need mm -hmm. to move to mm -hmm. a higher level. God wants to take all of us to a higher level, but it's good for us all uh, to come into agreement. Now, one of the things the Lord said to us, as far as walking in that glory, one of the first things was to walk out of ourselves. It was a, yes, I, I, mean. I mean, there's other ways I've seen it in the Bible and, and all, but that's the way the Spirit of the Lord said to us, we need to walk, walk out, out of ourselves. ourselves in order to walk to a higher level. So if we're going to be thrust to a higher level, uh, we, we've got to walk out of ourselves. You know, that plane has to be designed to lift and, and to come up into the air. It has to have be designed that way. Well, it's the same for us. We can't carry a lot of extra baggage. We, we've got to right, come out. Yeah, we've got we've to got get to rid of it. Up, come out of the old yeah, and, and yeah. come in to the new. And I've got a couple of uh, verses I want Sherry to share with us. And, and the first one, of course, is Galatians 2 and then Ephesians 4. Okay, Sherry? It says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Hallelujah. who loved me and gave himself up for me. Okay. I'm Hallelujah. Uh, we have to be crucified. If we're going to go to a higher level, we have to reckon have our to, bodies dead. Dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt, according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness hallelujah hallelujah put on the new man oh hallelujah well, yeah. not only do we put off the old man then we put on the new man and, and we can't keep carrying around that old body of sin we've got to, to cast it off and and put mm -hmm. it aside mm -hmm. and put on the new man because Hallelujah. we're talking about Hallelujah. we all need to go to a higher and higher level. Now, the next verse I want you to, to read is from Romans chapter 6 because it says how we're raised up. We're raised up by the glory of God. Okay, this is okay. Romans, Romans 6, 4 through 5. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised up from the dead through the glory of the Father. Okay, let's look at read that again. How was he raised up? By, by the, the glory of the Father. Okay. So we too may walk in the newness of life. Okay, so we're going to be raised up by the glory. Just like Jesus was raised Amen. up so we can walk in the newness of life. And so what we're being talking about today is being transformed and it's through the glory and it's as we come together with the energy of God releasing the energy of God through the Holy Spirit it's all about the Holy Spirit active and operating Amen. in our life Amen. through a strong relationship with him then that then that designs us see uh, we put off everything that keeps us from going up higher 
put off all of those mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Oh, hallelujah. And hallelujah. so we've got the design that we have lift that we can be lifted up. And then we've got people around us who are agreeing with us that, that we're going to go to a higher level. We're all going to go to a higher mm-hmm. level. And it's that glory that raises us up and it transforms us so that we're transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And I have a comment here. Okay. And that is, why is, why do we want to go to a higher level of glory? And what the the Holy Spirit has been sharing with us is that in the days that are left, in the days that are that are left, that we must be prepared to be at that higher level. We cannot stay where we are. We cannot be satisfied where we are in our spiritual walk. We we desire to go more and more into the glory of God and into a higher level of awareness and sensitivity to his spirit. And that's what it's going to take for us to be able to survive in the coming days. And so the Lord is preparing us. He's getting us ready. He's saying, hey, I want you to walk in my glory. I want you to to step up. I want you to go higher uh, in, in the spiritual realm. And the only way to do that is by being closely related to the Holy Spirit. To be more and more in tuned to the Holy Spirit, sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is telling each one of us to do. We cannot stay where we are. And I'll just pause there for a moment and let you you think on those things. Go ahead, brother. Okay. See, there is this incredible passage in, in uh, Acts 19, verses 11 and 12. And, and Paul said, oh, well, it, wrote, it was about Paul. It said how God wrought special miracles. You, you know, just ordinary miracles. Oh, that's, that's healing people and, and uh, stretching out legs and stretching out arms and uh, doing all kinds of things. But he was doing, God, God was doing it. He was doing it extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that aprons and handkerchiefs and cloths were taken from his body Mm -hmm. and they were sent out, uh, passed out to uh, people. And, And this is the thing that is just incredible to me. It said the sick, that sickness left them. Sick, the sickness left. Didn't say they were healed. It didn't say they mended that they they got better and better. That it was a process. It, it didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't talk about it. It it said sicknesses left, and it said evil spirits Spirit departed. departed. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hope you get a hold of that. There, there's a higher level. God wants to take us to a higher level, for so that when we lay hands on the sick. They, the sickness will leave. It will oh, depart heart. and the evil spirits will leave. Uh, and they're not going to hang around. They're Hallelujah. not going to linger. And the sickness is not going to linger. And you have to be healed over a, a period of time. Uh, but but sickness is left. Mm, and evil, evil spirits, spirits departed. departed. Woo. Hallelujah. Extraordinary mm, miracles. Mm. God wants you to do extraordinary miracles. miracles. And uh, two weeks ago, Sherry and I were uh, in a ministering in a conference uh, and there were 300 women there and they were coming through a fire tunnel. And if you've been around us for very long, you know how we operate in the fire tunnels. And so we had uh, elders and pastors uh, uh, holding up the fire tunnel, which is a piece of a long, narrow piece of cloth and they were holding it up and they were praying they were all, all along it and and then at the end of the fire tunnel uh, sherry and i were there and uh, praying for people and people were being slain in the spirit and uh, changed and, and healed and delivered and all kinds of miracles happening and and then the lord said reminded sherry that in a few days earlier she uh, the lord told her that uh, she would just be walking around uh, through town and people would touch her clothing and they would be healed. 
And so he said to her while we were ministering there, uh, why aren't you obeying me? And she said, well, well, what do you mean? He said, you let them touch your coat. Let them touch your jacket. And so when she started letting them touch her jacket, I'm talking about going to a higher level. The Lord's taking us to a higher level. He mm -hmm. wants to take all mm -hmm. of us mm -hmm. to a higher level. Yeah. And, and so uh, she had never done this before, but she hell, started holding out her jacket and letting people touch the, her jacket. And boom, they would just, they would just drop. Now, what we had done in the past, uh, as a lot of people were uh, slain in the spirit, we would move the uh, fire tunnel over, Sherry, I'd move over to another part of the building to pray for people, and, and people would just be slain in the spirit. But there were so many being slain so quickly uh, as we were ministering. This is two weeks ago in Mexico. Uh, that they had teams of people, and they would just jerk those people up and scoop them and up. Scoop them up and, yeah move them out of the way so we never had to move the fire tunnel we never had to share and i never had to move but we're moving in a higher level a higher level in the mm -hmm. spirit and that's what this message is about it, it's it's just to stir up in each of amen, us that amen. god wants us to go to a higher level and we've just talked about uh we're going to have to do it with uh help of each other amen it's not amen. about you just going out and living in a cave and thinking you're going to move up to a, a higher level god wants us all to be moving into a higher spiritual right. realm who are operating in more and more of his power and, and we're being transformed mm. Uh, mm. oh by Hallelujah. the glory of god we're being raised up by the glory of mm. god thrust the into manifest it. into uh, his glory and thrust to a higher level Hallelujah. there's some violence uh, in, in, involved in that it, it's not just a slow process i'm talking about a thrust do you think about a rocket thrust of moving us to a higher level and we all need each other and then this is the final verse i want to go through and that is ephesians 4 16 this is one of my favorite verses and i'm going to have sherry read it from whom the whole body being fit and joined together by what every joint supplies see that's you and you and you and you and every and one you of you and 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 all of us according to the proper working of each individual part okay that working is the energy it's if you energized. go back and look at the if word you, if you look at the word you see that's where we get our word energy yeah from. energio okay so it's energy so, the, so how much energy here it is how much energy, energy is flowing through your life hallelujah how much energy is flowing through your life and when we put our energy together there's this synergy and and a multiplication and an expansion and we can all oh, go hallelujah. to a higher level and be transformed into the image of christ and let Christ come forth in our lives. Okay, I'm Hallelujah. going to finish this, this verse. Right. Proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body, the body, the body of Christ, for the building up of itself in love. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when you supply what you have and we supply what we have. Then we all work together. Hallelujah. And we're thrust into another level of glory from glory to glory. And we are building ourselves up in the love of God. Oh, hallelujah. And it's the love of God that reaches out to people. Hallelujah. It's the love of God that's going to bring your family members in. It's the love of God that's going to uh, bring people into the kingdom of God. You know, and it says that the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent listen to this the violent and that word violent in the greek means full of energy full of power that's what it's going to take and the kingdom of god is taken violently by force hallelujah and we know that the enemy has no place. He has no place in your body. He has no place in your mind. I'm speaking that right now in the name of Jesus. He has no place in your finances. He has no place in your family and with your children 
or with your grandchildren. He has no place in your ministry in the name of Jesus. He has no place in the workplace. Hallelujah. So we do not give him a place and therefore we can operate with more power, more energy, more anointing, and that is going to thrust us into orbit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Into the supernatural realm. Into the realm. supernatural realm. That's what I call the orbit. Where the, Hallelujah. Where the miracles occur. That's where, where the miracles where occur. Where miracles are normal every day. Every day. Woo Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then sometimes we'll have extraordinary a miracles. miracles. Amen. But every day ought to be a miracle Miracle day. day. Filled with the miracles of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I come against any depression. I come against any discouragement. I come against any lack of hope. I come against all of those forces with the force of the Holy Ghost. 